Are you a squid? Do you need tires but are confused about all the options and choices out there? Well, here at Yammy Noob School for Kids Who Can't Squid Good, we've created a lovely 12-minute curriculum designed to get you from deeply confused and confounded to knowing exactly why you don't need hypersport tires for your Jixxer 250 because you quote-unquote ride hard on the street. Tuition is due upon completion of the course curriculum and can be sent to P.O. Box 42069 in Yo Mama's neighborhood. On a more serious note, the tires are super important for your motorcycle. They're one part on your bike that's actually meant to touch the ground, so making a good choice here can drastically impact A, the handling of your motorcycle, and B, how many parts your bike might end up touching on the ground. That's right, poor tire choice can actually lead to a crash if you cheap out or get tires that don't make sense for your use. But don't worry, your little noggin, I'm gonna guide you through all the codes and numbers and compounds and all that good stuff today so you can buy your new set of rubber with confidence. Now, while we're talking about buying tires, it would be remiss of me to not mention the fact that we actually sell tires here on the Gaming Noob Shop. We've got tires for ADV bikes, sport bikes, sport touring bikes, and more. But beyond tires, we've got oils, chains, tools, riding gear, and more. The best part about it is with every dollar you spend, you get an entry to win one of our giveaway bikes. All you need to do is select which sweepstakes you want to be signed up for. While you're there, you might as well check out the merch store. It's the only choice for discerning yam fashionistas out there who want to rep their favorite internet talkie man with the motorcycle at the same time you guessed it every dollar you spend on merch is an entry to win click the links down below to merch.yamenew.co or shop.yamenew.co and get started all right so if you're clicking on this video chances are you're wondering what tire you should buy for your motorcycle but first you need to ask yourself do i actually need a new tire most people often think that they need to buy a fresh set of rubber for their bike when in reality they need to rebalance their rim or air up their tires or something else the first thing you should do is take 30 seconds and check your tire pressures if you're wondering what you should be running for your motorcycle it's written either on your frame or your swing arm don't use the pressure on the side of the tire that's typically the maximum allowable pressure and you don't want to really be rolling around like that typically for a street bike i run 34 psi front and rear it's usually right on the money for the front tire and a little under for the rear running lower pressures can and i have to put some emphasis on this can here it can improve grip but that depends on a lot of factors there's a point of diminishing returns for example on track you might run a lower pressure because you're pushing the tire a lot and it's heating up thus bringing the back to standard operating temperature and pressure on the street chances are you are not pushing that hard and so you might only need one or two pounds off the manufacturer's spec but if you're running super low pressures for some reason not only will your bike handle like a Harley in sand, but it'll smoke your tire a whole lot faster. After checking your pressures, make sure you have all your wheel weights on. Any weird wobble from the tire doesn't mean you've got a bad tire. It could just be as simple as losing a wheel weight somewhere. This is really common among adventure riders who get stuck in mud, can literally suck the weights right off your rim and leave you with a nasty imbalance. If you did both of those things and your bike still handles kind of funny, it's probably time for a new tire. Some other signs that you might need to pick up a new tire are, number one, is your tire square, meaning you have a clear line between the curve edge in the center strip where you're normally riding. Spite has one of these as an SMCR because he constantly does massive pulls off of stoplights. Bad Spite. Number two, do you have any chunks missing from the rubber? Sometimes you hit obstacles in the road and it can rip pieces out of the tire but not puncture it. If your tire is missing pieces of the carcass, there's really no saving it. Number three, how old is the tire? Tires harden over time, especially if you store your bike outside, negatively impacting handling. If your tires are over three years old, you should probably just get a new set. That's kind of best common practice. Number four, do you have any puncture? If you patch a tire, technically that's only good for getting you home. I know a bunch of people will say they've run a tire ball with a bacon strip on it. You should probably just replace it. Number five, do you have any flat spots? This happens when you store your bike for winter on the tires instead of up on a stand. That leaves a permanent flat spot in the tire, which causes uneven wear and poor handling. If you have flat spots, replace it. Look at that, a mini list inside of a video. Don't say I don't do nothing for you. So you've come to the conclusion that you need a new tire. What now? Well, you just head off to your favorite online retailer and buy the most expensive set of tires available and put them on. More money equals more better, right? No, stop it. First thing you need to do is think about what kind of bike you ride and what kind of riding you want to do. For example, it doesn't make sense to put TKC 80s on an R1 and putting slicks on your street bike is a smooth brain move. Only someone who owns a Jixxer 250 would do something like that. Also, tires like trail tires and slicks aren't street legal, so if you're putting them on a street bike, you've got negative brain power. Now, I don't want you making a dumb, dumb tire choice, so let's break down the types of tires you can buy for your bike. 
First, you've got Sport Touring Tires. These tires are completely overlooked by street squids who are lying to themselves about the kind of riding they actually want to do. Sport Touring Tires are designed to last a long time, provide excellent grip in both wet and dry, and they don't require you to warm them up at all. They're ready to go the second you turn your bike on. In terms of aggressiveness, you're looking at a 3 all the way to a 6.5 out of 10. These are the correct choice for basically anyone out there on the street, whether you're on an MT-03, an MT-09, an MT-10, an FJR 1300, or anything in between. They come in a variety of sizes and often feature dual compound rubber, meaning you have a hard band center down the middle of the tire for longevity and soft rubber on the tires on the side for better grip when you're in the corner. But yammy! I can't drag knee on a sport touring tire, I want to go fast. Well, first of all, you probably can't drag knee anyway, and real fast boys don't even bother with that, so there you go. Secondly, sport touring rubber can lean super hard, it will cry mercy before sportier tires, but for the average street rider, these are perfect and they're pretty dang cheap too. They will last a lot longer than hypersport tires, let me tell you. Next up, you're looking at hypersport tires. Oh yeah, these are the right choice for every bike that claims to be sporty, so your nakeds, fully fared sport bikes, and sumos, right? Not not exactly. I'm going to rate these a 6.5 to an 8 out of 10 on the aggressiveness spectrum. If you're dedicating your life to only riding twisty roads and track days, this is probably the right tire for you. If you're not a commuter or something like that, they require a little bit of warming up to work perfectly, though you don't need to have them on warmers. They have a limited siping in the carcass to maximize dry grip, but not turn into a slick in the wet and they have a shorter lifespan than other tires due to their softer compounds. You'll probably notice as well at the edge of the tire there's no siping because it's basically a slick at the edge. They're more than enough for your first track day and probably your second track day and well into your 20th or your 30th. You probably don't need slicks for a long, 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 long time. You're probably sitting there thinking that you want Hypersport tires because they sound good on paper, but check the wear pattern of your current tire. Is it squaring off? If so, you probably don't need Hypersport tires. Let's talk about our last set of practical street tires, and that's cruiser tires. These are meant specifically for your Harleys, Harley wannabes, Goldwing, and their massive baggers. In terms of aggressiveness, they run from a 0 to 3 out of 10. They're hard as balls because they're meant to handle all the weight and torque of a big cruiser, rider, passenger, luggage, and the big gulp in your cup holder. They're meant to crush tons of miles in a straight line and slowly get you through a corner. You can get slightly grippier cruiser tires, but they won't compete with Hypersport tires or even sport touring rubber. I'm going to go ahead and slap car tires in this category because they handle just about as well, and there are so maniacs out there running dark side tires in the rear. Don't ask me why. I'm not going to spend a ton of time in the next category, which is DOT race tires because they're a little silly. Although they are technically road legal, yeah, should you run them on the street? No. They require to get them up to temperature to keep them there. You don't need them for your bike to take it to the track, and they last about as long as a fart in the wind. They're a 9 to a 10 out of 10 on the aggressiveness scale, and basically only track day only bros who are riding in the wet need to worry about them. The last tires we've got before we talk about knobbies are race slicks. In terms of aggressiveness, we're talking like a 42 out of 10. You literally only need slicks if you are going racing or you're trying to shave tenths or hundreds off your lap time and you're LARPing as a MotoGP rider. Do I have slicks on my race bike? Of course I do, because I love to LARP as if I'm a professional race bike rider. They're pricey, require you to warm them up with tire warmers, and in an outlet on the track, you can use them effectively, and they're extremely short-lived. GP bikes will rip slicks to shreds before the end of a race, and even leader bikes can cook a tire in a few seconds. Sessions. If you're looking at slicks, prepare your anus because you'll be forking out cashy money quite often. One big note about slicks is that they actually have a very different feel over regular DOT tires. Slicks actually very progressively let off lean angle and let off slip as opposed to DOT tires that kind of let traction loose very quickly. If you're a very avid track day rider, I'm talking you've got a completely built track bike, you only go to the track, that type of thing, the slicks might be a great option for you because they provide superior feel at the track. However, most people are just fine on a Q4 or a Super Corsa or something like that. I'm also going to gloss over dual sport tire and ADV tires because based on our analytics, no one really cares, but it's important to cover, so here we go. ADV tires are meant for big ADV bikes and more typically street bias to make for a smooth ride. They'll run from totally road bias to about 60-40 street and dirt. Anything more dirt bias and you're sacrificing street performance and tire life. For dual sports, you've got a lot more options. You can go all the way from 90-10 tires, which will last a long time, but really struggle off-road, to a 50-50 tire if you need to ride out to the trail. However, if you're looking to truck your bike out to the trails and you want maximum off-road grip, you can buy non-DOT knobbies which will billy goat up basically any obstacle, but they have a lifespan of a mayfly. 
The other big factor when it comes to off-road tires is the type of off-road riding you're going to do. If you live in a climate that's much more dirt and mud, you might want to buy a knobby that's specifically designed for mud and dirt and that sort of thing. Here in Texas where we live, we've got much more loose, rocky, gravelly type of off-road terrain, so we would pick a knobby tire that would make more sense for that kind of riding as well. However, we do not claim to be off-road experts or picking off-road tire experts, so if you are an off-road rider, you probably know more than us. With all the kinds of tires covered, let's take a quick look to explain sizing because it's the last thing you need to consider before you buy. Most sport bikes north of 600cc use a standard 120-70-17 front and a 180-70-17 rear. The first number is the width of the tire in millimeters. If your rim is meant for a 160, you can't put a thinner tire on there because it won't seal. You could theoretically squeeze a bigger tire on there, but it will change the shape of the tire and it will just stick with the same tire width as your stock rubber. The second number is the aspect ratio of the tire or the height of the sidewall. Sport bikes have a smaller sidewall so the tires don't flex under heavy cornering or braking, whereas cruiser tires often run taller sidewalls for the look. Third number is the rim size. Just make sure that one matches your rim size or the tire won't fit. Now, let's say you've purchased the right tire for your bike, the next step is mounting it up. If you're going to do it yourself, definitely watch a few YouTube videos to make sure you know what you're doing. It's not a hard job per se, but it is tedious if you're not careful, you might break the bead on your tire, meaning you need to order another one. Then once you have the new tire mounted up, you need to check the balance of your rim so you don't have any wobbles and for that you need a special stand. Once again refer to YouTube for a guide on balancing your tires. If I were you though I'd pop the rims off your bike and take them to the shop to have them to mount and balance your new rubber. Yes it'll cost a little bit of money but it's cheaper than going to the dealership with the bike or maybe you're bougie and have more money than spare time then you probably ride a Ducati and take it to the dealer for everything anyway in which case why are you watching this video? The last thing I'm going to cover today is the break-in myth for tires. A bunch of people still think you need to scrub in the tires for hundreds of miles or they'll hit their tires with a belt sander to rough them up, this is BS. Back in the day, you needed to scrub your tires in because of certain oils and compounds they use on the tire, but now they're pretty much good to go after the first 50 miles or so. Once you get your new tires on, go ride slowly down a twisty road and then go back down that twisty road slightly faster and leaning a little bit more, then after 50 miles, those tires are good to go. And that's all there is. You're welcome. There will be a test on it on class next week. Class dismissed. Fact. Hypersport tires don't make you faster. You're slow and you always will be. Goodbye.